Namaste. Hi. Let me share with you a simple practice you can do at home. It's a complete one, but also a good preparatory sequence if you're tackling deeper elements later on. For example, after this class, I will be doing my deep back men's hip openers. So it is, uh, I say, applicable for all types of uh, complex uh, techniques after the practice. You might practice your pranayama after, or you can do your stillness because it's good for releasing stagnation, making our bodies light so we can sustain sitting postures for long periods of time. Or if you're doing your relaxation, shavasana, the mind can relax. We begin. Head to the left, feet to the right, yeah, and just lie down flat. Right. And then ease the brain. Yeah. Starts with breath awareness always, inspiring. Feel the pressure of the breath rise to the upper spine. You may seal the tongue against the hard palate. Nourishing the brain, exhale, relax. Yeah. And you may rub the tongue around the mouth, behind the lips, against uh, the gums of the upper teeth, right and left, and the bottom, behind the cheeks. You may exercise your neck by opening the mouth wide, uh, and then crimping your face, lifting your optic nerves, and begin to move the head, maybe one side first, and become aware of the joints, hands, feet, you know, the shoulders and the legs, and then shift the head at the side, and send the arms over the head, and you might cross one leg over, and the other one, and then bending both knees to the chest, and then give them just gentle rubbing, circle the low back around, maybe side to side the hips there, and lightly push and pull. Good. All right. Extending the leg closest to me, the left leg, cross the right hip over for a twist, and spread that right arm wide behind you. And then ease the head down. And relax. Allow that gentle sigh of release to exit through your mouth with the light Simhasana breath. Beautiful. All right, rolling over on our belly. So keep your right knee bent to the side. Lift arm long. Now bend the right knee, turn the head where it's comfortable, and then circle that leg around. And then maybe find the leg side to side. You know, have openers, this one already. Yeah. And joint mobility to swim the leg. Yeah. Circle the foot, the ankle, pointing and flexing. And then just let the foot rest closer to your buttock. Yeah. If you feel the need to circle that ankle and the toes, open and flex them, point them, do that. Yeah. And passively limp your leg. You may allow it to fall side to side and around. Beautiful. All right, releasing, leveling the hips on our bellies. You know, releasing the hips. You may sway them a bit. Bending the knees here, lifting one side up, and then let it hang. You know, you may use the forearm to support the head. Crisscross, swim the leg. Good. There, yeah, extending the legs. Just slightly wiggle. Yeah, open the neck, adjust. See your light, lifting. One side up and change. All right, forehead down. Yeah. Rest. Make sure there's no pressure building up the brain. Yeah. Pressing to the hands. Yeah. Extending a hands forward and stretching a hips high. At home, Mukashvanasana. Here, bend and stretch, and then walk the legs. Good. Side to side. It. Forward and back. All right. Easy. Kneeling. So the left knee kneels through. Up, keep the right leg open, and then you might angle externally and roll inward, external and inward. You might bend the knee there. Yeah. If you have the flexibility of the joint, yeah. Otherwise, you just keep going with the side to side, coiling in and stretching back and move around. Beautiful. All right, both legs in front of us. Mm. Straighten them. Yeah. Adjust. So it's Quite mobile class this one, 
you know, so free flowing, wiggle, wiggle the legs and find them. You know. Right. Now, left leg crossing under, right knees on top. Yeah. Easy with the elbow or the Arama Sendrasana. Yeah. So you may just adjust there so you're thin and flat and turn to a twist. Yeah, what's good about Adrashan Rasana is a powerful position, but there are many modifications. You know, you can just hug or even just straighten your left leg. Well done. All right, uncrossing, opening a leg so wide. Yeah. For example, you're working still with your flexibility. You can use that, you know, prop around you, block, pillow, you know, blankets. Open the legs wide yeah, to support you. You place that padding under. Yeah. It's closer to your hips as you can. Yeah, but this is too high for me, depending on uh, your body type, body structure. Uh, if you can go flat, why not? Upavishta yeah. konasana. And here. You may move, you may use the hand to turn the leg outward. Yeah. Crawl forward, side to side the hips, and then just settle in the middle. Yeah. I prefer doing it with my arms forward so the spine can move forward, or you can open the arms wide to the side too. Yeah. Or do all of them and changing arms periodically, side to side, or the elbows. Yeah. And then stay. Yeah. In here, you don't want your thigh bones to, to roll inward. Yeah. They have to go slightly outwards. Yeah, so this this healthy, you know, I'd say, position or placement of your hips. Because if you're too coiled in, yeah, the tendency is the low back will absorb too much of that pressure. So when you open externally, yeah, so your hip joints yeah, are in place ideally. Good. And from there, just use the hand to press, allow the joints to adapt, maybe one leg, and then the other leg, and then just do this, to decompress the hips, Good. and then just throw yourself to the right side, like this, all right? And then pedal the legs, stretch forward and back, and circle around, good. And exhale, ease the breath out. Mm. Breathing in. I'm breathing out. Now this time, let's try. Yeah, you're crossing both knees all at once, or yeah, one at a time, kneel and set, or <laughs> jumping through <laughs> between the hands. All right, straighten the legs, uh, move the hips side to side like this. Yeah, shake it out. Yeah. And we're twisting again. Yeah, this time, it's the right leg under and the left on top. Yeah. In the Adramatsendrasana, so the position, the heel is actually um, in front of the sitting bones. It can stop yeah, the hips and it can regulate the, um, I say, sudden movement in the hip, up and back. And that will grip the sitting bones. You have more lever to turn the spine without too much, um, I say, um, rotation of your hip joint. And yeah. Or just bind where the hips are light. I'm just teaching you some deeper aspect of this powerful position. Adra And you might just allow the arm to rest there. Yeah. One more thing, you don't want to be crossing that foot too far across. Yeah, in front. So like this, this thin gap, and you can fit yourself through that tiny gap. And then you're twisting. The line. So the spine remains in a spiraling lifting action. You're not tilted forward, neither too far back for the back. And yes, um, the hips, may, they might not be perfectly flat behind, but inside you feel light and open. Then you may adjust the neck. And then just wiggle a bit. You may loosen. Beautiful. All right, hand crossing, wide legs again. Yeah, so let me just angle so you can see as well what's happening at the back. Yeah. Wide. Turn. You might actually start by turning in 
and out, and then maneuver your spine forward away from the hips. Yeah, one side is normally tighter than the other. Yeah, so you might do this. Yeah, yeah. like you want to loosen. Yeah, sometimes I do this like you are turning through the sockets of your hips, so you can move yeah, the stagnation out of those deep points. That that's why the sequence is so good. Yeah, if you're tackling deeper elements of hip openness, back bends later on. Yeah, sometimes I would do this and then just circle around. Yeah. There we go. And forward. Yes. It's good to always um, have, uh, I say, supportive um, things around you. Yeah. For example, this um, table. So what I do, I will use that grit of the wood yeah, to, I say, press so I can axis yeah, inside. And forward. Yes, the walls around you and, and the chairs, the fixtures there, you can utilize them to support you. And then when you don't need them anymore, you know, just back off away from those supportive tools. Hmm, love this one. Feels good for the hips and the low back. Decompressing those sciatic nerves and discomfort, uh, tension, but of course, yeah, and this is an advanced element. Always modify if you need. Yeah. Yeah. To support your hips. Yeah. All right, coming up. And allow the joints to adapt, releasing. All right, one more thing. Allow the joints yeah, to restore first. Yeah, you just don't want to bounce the release. Yeah, although you can do like a powerful, for example, I do that too. Yeah, so but I make sure I allow my joints to that first before I do those techniques. For example, yeah, you can just um, go to the down dog, or um, or you can flow. Yeah, if you are uh, inspired, yeah, light, pressing through the hands, and. You may jump out, yeah, or you may flow, yeah, and downward dog, but that's not required now. And then here, coil forward and back. Beautiful. All right. Easy. All right, and just step right foot forward. A standing position is always good before you change sides. Yeah, bending the right knee. Yeah, and here you may shake the hands. You may do wrist mudra, hand mudras, dance the shoulders. You may stretch your fingers one pair each time. Yeah, and you keep the others open, thumbs, index, middle ring, shake. Yeah, and side stretch. Place the forearm down and stretch the side trunk. Yeah, and here. You might loosen, arch, and release. All right, both hands down to floor. Ten toes, the same direction. You may move one side, the other side. Open, and yeah, wide leg forward bend. Press the top of the Ease. Yeah. All right, forward, and then just walk towards the left hand side. Good. And both legs behind us at the home of now bend and stretch side to side. Right. You can just kneel and sit and just fit your legs through, or you can just jump your body through to the sitting position. Yeah, head from there, lie on your back. Good. And second round, yeah, side to side. If there's tension building up the neck, uh, you might hum. Yeah, random melodies there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You may lightly shake the legs up and the hands too. Uh, and then do this again. Good, hand twisting. Yeah. Right leg long, cross the left over, and open your left arm up. Breathe. All right, 
and turn around on the belly. Left knee remains bent. Bend the right. Find the leg. Uh, left. I might shake that foot. Lamp. And you might want to move a little bit forward that shoulder to access the inner half. Sometimes lift the leg there. Mm. Good. And just a moment of draining of the limbs. Mm, love this. Um, flappy fish. Matsakri Dasana opens the hips, the pelvis, the sacrum, sends the energy down the Manipura Chakra for energization, building of our created energies. And the digestive fire, Agni. Well, there's something so, I say, opening about this. Yeah, opening and so light. Mm, it has this instantaneous relaxing effect in the brain. If there's one asana, I'd like you to keep in your practice this one. So nourishing. Right, and just level, adjust, yeah, yeah, move the neck. You may wiggle the shoulders there like your pet dog or cat, you know, wiggling them. All right, pressing to the hands, yeah, tucking. I don't work as an asa, dog. Yeah, kneeling, yeah, right knee through, yeah, and the left leg long, yeah, and then side to side. So if you notice our sequence, it's not your conventional, just changing from right side and left side. Somehow, you know, we we do uh, elements, yeah, not specifically same element and changing. It's like we're flowing that same side in the whole sequence in varying, uh, I say, uh, techniques, because our energy is like that. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of random inside, and uh, if you move with that inner flow of the energy and yeah, that's where your body opens yeah and it's li it likes to move uh, around those inner joints of the body in the hips all right head and forward them shake them out and side to side them all right, all right. now bending yeah your right knee under left on top all right you can just repeat this one, yeah, the Arbra Matsyendrasana, or yeah, you may practice this. Bending your right foot, yeah, close to your left inner thigh, yeah, and the, this turning of your right thigh bone in. So this this healthy, I'd say, um, uh, positioning of your femur bone and your hip, yeah. Although this one is a deep element, so just be careful when practicing this one. And yeah, pick up your left leg. Yeah, you might move that buttock first and then cross that foot over your right upper thigh. So let me just face you so you can see. Good. The bar the chest now. Yeah. Breathing in. And twist to your left. You may place your hand under in the reverse palm position. Or you can just grab hold of your knee. Again, if there's pain, it means you're not ready. Pain is wrong. Yeah, if you feel pain, easy, back to your first Adra Matsyendrasana. Okay? Even at this stage of my practice, I really exercise caution if I do deep um, knee work, yeah, flexion, twisting, rotation. Yeah. You don't want to hurt yourself because once <laughs> you get injured, it will take a long time to heal. And even after you've healed from your injury, the mind remembers the pain, the trauma, and you lose the confidence. Yeah. Good, and crossing, easy, yeah, release the legs maybe, yeah, give them a light massage, yeah, kick and stretch, yeah, you may fan them out, side to side like this, you might vibrate the leg, 
Good. From here, I'm just bending your knees like a white diamond, and then moving your tail back, and then scooping your tail under, tail back. So you might also, you know, roll the thigh bone in and out, and massaging them while moving your spine away from those inner hip joints. Yeah. Right. You can continue doing that, or you may do a wide forward bend again, or, yeah, normally I do the Kurmasana, turtle. Yeah, knees up. Yeah, same side to side. You may do it one arm at a time or both sides all at once. So let me just uh, angle so I don't hit yeah, the textures around me. Lightly traction the neck away from those joints and open forward. Yeah, yeah ease. Yeah, you may turn the head one side. The other side, <laughs> wiggle, kurmasana. So deep and powerful and you know, opening those dormant centers of the thoracic abdomen, hips, and the pelvis, where you house the four important channels of the astral body, muladhara, Shodeshtana, Manipura, Nahatan, here even the throat becomes involved. And of course, the Bandhasam. Good at accessing the Bandhasam sometimes. I would play around this by lifting the thigh so you can move and maneuver inside and then settle. Breathe. All right, to release. Roll one arm, pressing, roll the other hand, exhale, don't rush. You may allow the heat to rest first, inhale, rise. Allow the hips to adapt again, like that, like that. Yeah, circle around, you may rub. Beautiful. Yep. And from there, <laughs> yeah, we can jump back and flow, or um, no, I will not do that anymore. I will just go to a down dog yeah, and walk the legs. Now one more set. Yeah. We're standing asana yeah, to break the cycle. Yeah. Step up, yeah, your left foot forward to the front. It's the left foot now. Right heel down and then just opening to the side second warrior. So stay with the left foot forward. So let me just angle so you can see. Right. Forearm to thigh and then stretch. Mm. You see, you may wonder how come <laughs> one remembers all of this yeah. even if you've done many things before a particular element yeah, you're not changing right away from one side to the next because the body feels that really you will feel it like your body will tell you oh you have to loosen you have to restore and do something else and even the tongue, that's why I notice me moving my tongue around because I gain access to those inner joints. Mm. For example, if you rub the tongue against the back of your lap and then breathe, you, may be you will be able to feel mm. the space under the shoulder and the head. Yeah, it feels good. All right, place your hands down yeah, and just step back. Down with facing dog here, bend and stretch side to side. Yep, last. Yeah, you can just sit through, <laughs> cross the legs through, or yeah, if you're working one leg at a time, one, one, fitting your legs through, and then sitting forward. All right, twisting again. Left leg is under, either Adra Matsyandrasana, this one, bind or without the bind, or the Bharadvajasana. Right, you may rub side to side like that. Yeah. Axis, roll the thigh bone in, move the spine a little bit away, flex and coil. Yeah. So there's no stagnation, trap along those deep creases of your hips. You may lift the hip and move the thigh back. Yeah, inhaling and exhaling to the back. Yeah. So it's like a restless practice. Yeah, the energy is like that. Yeah? Especially when you practice uh, asana. Uh, when the joints of the inner body become too sensitive to those 
deep, or I say even the subtlest movement, you know, you have to gain access to them so you can create more openness inside. Yeah. Sometimes you might feel that <laughs> your right hip goes to the left and your left hip even goes to your right foot, yeah, like you're crooked. Yeah, but when you move through them, yeah, in seemingly uncoordinated, asymmetrical motion, that's where you achieve symmetry. Yeah. Like you want to go out of the alignment so you can achieve better alignment. Yeah, simple. Yeah, it's coiling inside. Yeah, like the snake flowing through your inner body. It's never static, right? From there, uncross, release. Yeah, Koil masana. Yeah, you can just do this. Yeah, remember our drill. Yeah, massaging. Yeah, lifting. Yeah, coil, open, access. You may rub like that. If you have those spiky balls, yeah, the ball with spikes, and you can place that under the buttock, and you rub your buttock, yeah, and the muscles there. And that will open the hips and then release stagnation, clogging your inner joints. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, wiggle. And ease. Don't get tired working on your elements. Many years ago, when I was starting, <laughs> this was just a dream. I see well, people do it yeah, before. Yeah, some, some of my colleagues in the yoga industry, yeah, teachers, fellow teachers, and I, was so inspired by them, yeah. Even the great asana teachers who walked our path, they inspired me a lot. But I was, I didn't like seek it. But I was open to the possibility of yeah, learning them. And yes, I'm so happy and grateful that. Yeah, some of them <laughs> I was able to learn and practice. All right, one arm at a time. Yeah, push away. Do that. Yeah, restore, restore. Yeah, and you may find the leg out to the side. All right, lie down if you've finished, or you may do the rest of your deeper components. Yeah, but for now let's finish. Yeah. Inhale the arms over the head and so I am side to side I'm arching and curling. And exhale ease. You may move the wrist around. Yeah. This one arm. We move the hip. The other hand and brush the hip. Yeah. And rise the breath up. Inhale. You may at least spin and wiggle at the top, uh, shake the climate, and exhale. All right, fingers again. Yeah, just this yeah, random curling and bending, stretching. And last one, breathing it. All right, hands connect. Exhale in front of the chest and fold the heads down. Thank you, really. Thank you for joining me and enjoy the rest of your practice if you're doing more. Or enjoy your relaxation. Or yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. See you. Bye. Namaste.